Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help tell the story of the 20th century. From stem to stern, the entire ship is a honeycomb of watertight and flame-proof compartments. Far below the waterline are engine rooms, fire rooms, fuel tanks, magazines packed with enough assorted high explosive to blow us all to kingdom come. The hangar deck is like a gigantic tunnel, nearly two city blocks long and wide enough to house four freight trains abreast. Fighters take off first to form cover aloft for the other squadrons. Then the bombers, heavy laden with destruction. As our first fighters race in toward Marcus Island, they stay low, hoping to escape detection by the enemy's radar. Then they climb suddenly and dive a surprise strafing attack on the enemy's airstrips. These red balls floating up at us so lazily are anti-aircraft fire. There is three times as much of it coming up at us as we can see, because only one shell in three is a tracer. What look like fiery polywogs are tracers from our own wing guns. The ak ak is much heavier than expected, but through it we go to knock out enemy bombers on the ground. All through these battle pictures, realize that we are looking straight down our own gun barrels. These pictures are taken automatically by the same mechanism that operates the guns. The pictures even shake with the gun's recoil. Our eye is now the very eye of our fighting airplane. The enemy's picket boats and supply ships offshore are thoroughly scraped. No longer will these craft bring rice and sake and munitions to Marcus. As the fighters and bombers swing victoriously away from Marcus Island, towering columns of smoke show the thorough job our boys have done. Back aboard ship, Smokey is tracking the flyers with care to be sure that none is missing and that no enemy planes are trying to follow them out to our fighting lady. Now is when the landing signal officer must judge not only the speed, but estimate the battle damage of planes like these. The pilot of a torpedo plane has been unable to release his load of incendiaries. Burning thermite is spilling out at incandescent heat. In the plane's tanks remain about 75 gallons of high-octane gas. The men who brave this danger to save pilot and crew deserve every citation they get. 